Hello, PodFam, and hello, Rachel. How are you today? I am good, Laura. It's been a very productive week at work. Excellent. That is, is always great. a win. It's always a win. And I don't know, it's not stressful per se, which I'm very grateful for, but it's just a lot. And I am definitely feeling a little bit, uh, just a little bit tired, a little bit drained. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, we're kind of over that first few days of getting Mm -hmm. back into work and to routine. And now everyone's just like, okay, full steam ahead. We need to do everything yeah. and we need to do it full force. And I'm like, whoa, guys, yeah, got to ease. We've got to ease into this because I am feeling the same way as you. Like, yeah. I feel like I've had a productive week, extremely productive. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm just like, man, it's just I don't even have a time to relax during the day. No. It's literally I put my head down when I start and when I pick it back up again, it's the end of the day. Yep. Uh, usually I text you throughout the day, right? Yeah, That's never heard from thing. you. I honestly picked up my phone at 4.30 and I was like, I haven't texted her today. That's not good. Yeah. It was a weird, yeah, I don't know. And we're just sitting here like, I don't I don't want to be full steam ahead. Let's maybe be like halfway to full steam ahead. <laughs> I know. We're only, okay, like what? Third, second, second third or week. third week back? Yeah. Into work? Let's, let's, yeah. We're still not ready. For the full screen. No, no, no. And uh, the um, disbelief about how fast time goes, it just gets worse and worse every month. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I have lots of time to send this email. And I was like, it's end- almost the end of January. <laughs> Ugh, crazy. Crazy how fast. Like, I swear it was just Christmas and New Year's. And now we're, like, looking at February soon, which is crazy. Are you at least having a relaxing tea this evening? I am. I am having a new herbal tea that I found at the grocery store, and it's called Ginger Aid, which um, it's it's basically just ginger tea. Love it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the um, you know the organic aisle. Yeah, Uh, I'm pretty sure they just those tea boxes just give it a fancy name so that they can charge an extra dollar for it. Exactly, because really, you know, there's nothing stopping you from just grabbing a ginger root, Mm -hmm. like the the produce section, and tossing that in some hot water. You essentially get the exact same thing. (laughs) Yeah, I actually just had my first sip of it though, and it's actually quite good. It's almost there must be something else with the ginger because it has a bit of a sweet aftertaste. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So uh, gingerade, I would recommend it for you next time you go to the grocery store. All right. I will keep my eye out for it. Yes. What are you having? Uh, So I too also needed a relaxing herbal tea. So Mm -hmm. I brought back my nettle Greek mountain tea. And uh, this is the one that looks really funny in the bag it's like super fuzzy for oh yes because it has the dandelion or something yes this is the one with the dandelion and uh, it's just so calming and it's not too strong either like it's just like a very mellow tea Mm -hmm. but it does have like a lot of health benefits so says the internet so i thought this would just be a very nice supportive tea for the evening the other thing that has been supporting my soul is adele's new 30 album Ah, I'm obsessed. I I'm love obsessed. that for you. Have you listened to it yet? I've listened to parts of it. The beginning, uh, other than Easy on Me, is a bit rocky for me, so I haven't gotten uh, quite past there, but I am trying for you. Okay. But I do so far really like Oh My God and <sighs> Easy on Me. Those are good. Those yes. Are good ones. Those ones are really good. I love Oh My God. It's been stuck in my head all day. Another song I think you would really like is I Drink Wine. Uh, that sounds like something I would yeah. like. Yeah. It's just yeah. like like I saw that song title. I'm like, I feel like I would like this. And sure enough, I do. Um, and also like All Night Parking and Woman mm-hmm. Like Me. Ooh, mm-hmm. so good. Oh, I just, Sorry. See, I was trying to remember which one you had recommended to me and it was that one and I haven't listened to it yet. Okay. Yes. And I there are some other songs like I enjoy them. Like just the sound is amazing. It it feels like modern lyrics with like mm-hmm. an 
old time feel that's like on a record player. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do really enjoy the album as a whole. But yes, yeah. there are a few songs that you're just like not maybe totally connected to yeah. as as some of the other ones. So for any of our listeners who have not listened to the album yet, like definitely go watch the lyric videos on mm-hmm. YouTube because um, apparently like that's like the new thing to do since Taylor did it. And Adele yep. is a uh, self-proclaimed big fan of Taylor Swift along as long as her uh, as well as her son. As well. I love it. Yes. She took him to That's a Taylor so Swift concert and he was like mesmerized. And she's like, honey, I do that too. And he's like, I don't care. This is Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> like he has no idea. Like his mother is Adele. <laughs> which no. Is like a beautiful no. voice. No. He's just like Taylor Swift. That's where my mind goes. It's kind of just a – I don't know. I feel like that's just how kids are though. Your parent could be like the coolest person in the world and you'll be like, but this – other person in this industry yeah it's just like but you're just mom or you're just dad you're just you know <laughs> you could be the yes most famous person and like well that's just mom and dad they're not mm-hmm. cool <laughs> yep a uh, another album that i've been loving lately and i've loved it kind of ever since it came out i can't remember it was like a few months ago but uh blue banisters by lana del rey oh very nice yes check it out uh definitely like i've kind of picked and choose chosen which ones are my favorites now but it feels um when I was like a teenager I quite enjoyed her original music like do you remember that like ride era yes in like 2014 it feels very much like she's gone back like this album goes back to that style of music and all I want is just a vinyl version of it so that I can put it on when I'm cleaning the house on my record player and stuff because it just feels it feels like an album that it's made for vinyl where you listen to the whole thing it's like an experience you know what I'm saying yeah and that's the thing and that's why I kind of love the 30 album because it it's telling a story and it's Mm -hmm. really about like Adele's uh, relationship and divorce that she went through and The album is like a letter to her son trying to explain it to him, especially like a few of the songs on there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just love albums that are a complete thought. Obviously, because we've done like so many episodes of Taylor's albums that are stories or or concepts. So very Mm -hmm. much in line and very much down my alley. Yeah, I love it. I, I did uh, I did listen to Olivia Rodrigo's album on the way to work today. It was just the perfect amount of time. Nice. I like that. I like some songs from there. Yes. Some of it feels uh I don't sometimes her voice gets lost in the production. Yeah. I like, find. Like she's still yeah. kind of working on the instrumental side. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that girl's got, got a future going for her. She does. So I wanna pr- I wanna protect her. I'm like, you're so little. You're so little. <laughs> Sometimes she'll be like at events and stuff and you can tell that the stylist tried to make her look like five years older than she actually is. And I'm like, she just graduated from high school. Protect her. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's okay. She got the map from Taylor. Um, It's true. She did. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Anyway, so tonight or today on this episode, we are going to be sharing more of our favorites. And Mm -hmm. that is our favorite podcast because – Obviously, from having our own podcast, we enjoy other podcast shows, and we think it's just yeah. important to share the love. And one of the most like asked questions is like, "What else are you listening to?" You know, like you binge a show, mm-hmm. and then you just want to find another one, and it's so hard to find good podcast shows. So we thought we would drop our top ten favorites that we are currently mm-hmm. listening to. Would you like to take us away? Sure, I will. Go, I'll go first. Okay, right. so my first podcast is actually the very first podcast I ever listened to, and this is going back like almost before I knew what a podcast was, because this show plays on CBC Radio, and that <laughs> is, um, yeah, I love CBC Radio. So that show is Under the Influence with Terry O'Reilly. This one, have you ever listened to it, Rachel? Uh, Most likely at some point in my life, but not religiously, no. 
Okay, well, this is one for any marketing nerds out there, which I am from mm-hmm. having a marketing background. And it's just all these awesome historical stories and amazing like ad campaigns and various um, things that have happened in the advertising world. And Terry himself, he has, I believe, three books out now. He just launched his third book. And he's just such a nice guy. I've actually met him before and he signed my my books, which was great. Mm-hmm. And Happy uh, for you. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like always a little bit starstruck when I meet people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I honestly like love every episode that comes out. They are so well produced, so well researched. And you learn so much from them as well. There's only one episode I have to complain about, but it's more like a mm-hmm. personal thing with me. And it's the um, ASMR episode okay. and everything's done in a whisper and it's like – I hate ASMR. I, I cannot. Like I'm someone who – I know there's like a, a thing mm-hmm. for it, but like people chewing or like noises, uh, anything like that. Like I, I honestly – I'm cringing like, right now. I'm cringing wanna, right now. Oh God. Like it makes me want to like tear my ears off. Um, Mm -hmm. so that is the only episode I've ever turned off out of his like hundreds that he has. So I think that's a pretty good track record. That is, that is. I'll have to check that one out. I never think to listen to CBC radio sometimes. Yes. Well, that's where I first heard it. Um, and then once I realized what like podcasts were and like they were becoming more of a thing, you could Mm -hmm. just listen to it on, on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. Nice. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I'll have to check that one out. Definitely. Definitely listen to Under the Influence with Terry O'Reilly. So, Rachel, what is your number one? So, my number one, and it's hosted by, I honestly think she's probably one of like my comfort influencer. And it's Kaylin's Coffee Talk, hosted by Kaylin Nicholson, yes. who is a fellow Canadian. Fellow Canadian. And oh, sorry. Terry O'Reilly is also a fellow Canadian, I, obviously, since I met him in our small town. But um, Fair enough. Yeah. Sorry. Fair enough. to mention that. Got to shout out the Canadians <laughs> here. Yeah. So she definitely um, has transitioned a bit more to being primarily through YouTube. That's where quite a lot of her audience is. So she on YouTube, she's got two channels, which is Coe's and Kayla Nicholson, uh, if you want to check those out as well. And I don't know, I think I found her in 2018 at a time where her content was very much what I needed to hear. So it was very much about lifestyle and mental health and spirituality and the intersectionality of those three things, which I don't know, like it was something that I was becoming interested in. So it was nice to have somebody who that was pretty much all their content was, was talking about that. Lately, she has transitioned uh, just because there was some stuff on the back end of her podcast where uh, just her formats changed a bit. So she primarily does her podcast, what would be her podcast episodes back in the day through her Co's channel on YouTube, if you want to check it out there. And I don't know, she's just, I love her. She's so inspiring and comforting and it feels like whenever she has a big major change in her life, I'm kind of going through something very similar. So for example, like last winter, she moved out of the city to the countryside, just as I was moving out of the city and into the countryside. So it's been nice to kind of go out, uh, feel like I'm going through that experience with her. So if that is the type of podcast or person that you are looking to consume the content of. It's Kaylin's Coffee Talk or her Co's channel, and it's hosted by Kaylin Nicholson. Nice. Yeah, I love podcast shows where you feel like you can relate to the host. And like Mm -hmm. that is obviously something we've mentioned in in our show before that like we hope our listeners, you know, they can relate to us and and really have a community. Um, Because I I have listened to Kaylin a little bit, not not as much – as you, but, um, Mm -hmm. I do love her story. Like she really does have some, um, good experience to share with her listeners. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
yeah, I just love that she's really built that Co's community. And she's really someone like we look up to mm-hmm. as well, like obviously as a Canadian and and um, as just a female uh, producer. Now, the format of her show, has that changed a little bit over the years? Like didn't she used to have a little bit more of like guest speakers and now it's almost like solely a solo cast or is that more like do you think with COVID and her now living outside the city? Um, no, it's always been just her, but I think, uh, before with her older episodes, um, just with, I think it was some like market, uh, like kind of pod, uh, like YouTube agent. I don't really know what those things are called. Um, it was like part of a deal that she was in where she would have the podcast going at the same time and they would have to be separate like separate content so the video had to be different from the podcast oh okay yes so it was like the episodes she would release were just podcast episodes where now since she's more focused on releasing those coffee talks through her co's channel she takes the audio i believe from those videos and puts it onto the podcast okay which is why which is why it sounds a bit more like a youtube video when you're listening to it yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, um, I'm just I'm glad she's still uh, doing what she's doing, especially because I know that was a bit of an ordeal for her to get off that network and kind of own her own content again. Mm-hmm. Right, it, that's a net. It's a network. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, no, I I'm very happy for her, and it's just it's comforting, and I love it. And there's a lot of really really great episodes, especially if you like kind of go back to like that 2019 era. So yeah, would um 100 recommend her. She also does like Taylor Swift album reactions. Nice. So you know, right up our alley. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one after my heart. So, <laughs> Kaylin, if you ever <laughs> listen to this episode, you know you want to come talk Taylor Swift. Give us a give us a DM on on Instagram. Please do. We can talk about Taylor Swift and transitioning from country to city life and city to country life. Amazing, be great, amazing. All right. So my second podcast is the second podcast I ever listened to <laughs> for a very long time. People, I only listened to like one show at a time, and I'd add on another one. Um, nowadays, I listen to many different shows all the time, but mm-hmm. it was it was a gradual process for me. Yes. So this second show is Martinis and Your Money with Shannon McLay. You do and, love that one. Oh my God. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. And I've actually talked to Shannon before. She is so much fun. I absolutely love her. Um, mm-hmm. I even wanted to go work for her company, the financial gym at one point. <laughs> and then COVID <laughs> happened. Um, and then True. I got the job that I have now. So it all worked out for the best because I didn't really want to move to the US and they were not quite ready for their first international employee. Um, True. True. That being said, I am a huge supporter of what she does. And this was actually a show like I started from episode one and mm-hmm. she had, I think she's at like 400 episodes now. But mm-hmm. when I started listening back in like 2017, 2018, she had about 200 episodes. So it took a while. It took a while for me to get through all that content, but I absolutely binged it because it was in 2017 and 2018 where I first really started wanting to learn about personal finance and becoming financially literate. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was just out on the Google looking up for, for things and like I drove a lot. So I was just like, oh, it'd be so great if I could listen to something while I'm driving. Mm -hmm. Um, And sure enough, her podcast was one of the top rated ones for learning about personal finance. And um, I don't want to say it's sent like it's not targeted towards females because there's so many like male listeners as well. Mm -hmm. But I felt like she just was so real and made things so simple that it Mm -hmm. really did ignite my passion for finance and Mm -hmm. helping other people understand money. So this like I have so much to to owe this podcast to 
because mm-hmm. it was just like the foundation for everything and really turned turned like my finance my financial education around because mm-hmm. I really didn't know anything when I started but it's been just like an awesome journey to go along with her and she's just so much fun she has the most amazing guests on there and uh yeah I cannot recommend the show enough have you listened to it Rachel uh I do have it on my subscription list but I ha- I think I listened to like one episode but I think I was like fresh out of college so I wasn't quite ready for it no uh, but now I have been I definitely need to add a new show to my roster and it is on my list so I want to check it out yeah, definitely check it out. My favorite episodes are the um, Financially Naked mm-hmm. episodes, and it's where, like, listeners – and it all started with Shannon herself. Um, she was going through a really hard divorce, and um, she just kind of wanted to show she, – she's just like, you know, people's numbers are just numbers. So she shared, like, all of her financial numbers, like, her successes, her struggles, and then it inspired, like, other people – Mm-hmm. to get on the show with her and and share those numbers and just kind of get like a little bit of guidance of like where should they go next and um mm-hmm. if you are in the states uh for any listeners definitely check out the financial gym it's like a month to month service that you can have and they just they just help you get your finances going so cannot recommend that one enough and this is just one thing that i've noticed um maybe more particularly with personal finance, YouTubers is – can you like add any light to this? I assume that she talks about more than just stop spending here and you will save money. Oh, my God. Okay. Sometimes I find that very frustrating because I seek out those personal finance YouTubers and I'm like, okay, this is kind of helpful, but like one, I don't want to remove – happiness from my life, but I'm also not being taught how to invest or, you know, what type of account is the right one to get started. And um, then there's the whole like streams of income episodes where it's like, cool, that's nice to know about, but also feels like I would need to be an influencer in order to have those streams of income. So does she keep it more general and helpful. Can you shed any light on that? Oh, yes, absolutely. So Shannon really does fill those gaps that the YouTubers um, love to focus on because I don't think there's an episode that she has said, don't spend money on this. Invest in like crypto and like these stocks, Mm -hmm. you know. She just takes it down to a level of like, okay, I'm going to teach you, like, how do you get a raise? Like, how do you ask for a raise? How do Mm -hmm. you um, understand what an expense is? How do you open an investment account? Do you know what ETFs are? Like, it's just such a a base level that Mm -hmm. a lot of people skip. And Mm -hmm. you need that foundation when it comes to your finances because you can't – Uh, Tell someone who maybe is like fresh out of college, so they've got student loans um, that they don't understand how the interest works on and be like, okay, now you have a paycheck. Invest, invest, invest. And like Mm -hmm. they have no idea what they're doing. Um, So yeah, that's why I really love the show. Like she doesn't talk about kind of the trendy things or anything like that. She's She is like a 20 plus year veteran of uh, being a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. And she actually knows what she's doing. Like she's a professional. (laughs) Um, Unlike some YouTubers that are just like, I like money. So I'm going to talk about money without – or like I really like crypto. So I'm only going to talk about crypto. Well, you know what? Crypto is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I really love about Shannon. Great. I'll have to check it out. It sounds like it would be a lot more helpful than other – other areas I've looked at. I think so because you know what? If the gym is your holy grail, keep it as your holy grail. It's okay. Go to the freaking gym. Yeah. It's if that right. makes you happy, it's fine. Yes. Don't <laughs> cancel your subscription because someone on YouTube told you to save money off of it. I know. If you really <laughs> love Netflix or your Disney Plus account, 
you don't have to cancel it. There are other ways to save money. Or if you really need your coffee in the morning, that's fine too, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love my Disney Plus account. See? Gotta have that. <laughs> great. Gotta have it. All right. Well, my second one is the And That's Why We Drink podcast. Oh, I've never and listened to this. Laura, I feel like the two hosts, Adam Schultz and Christine Schieffer, are just two people that are after our own hearts because their episodes are three plus hours long <laughs> of it. just basically talking like we do where it's just like, all right, what were we talking about again? <laughs> And it's just so funny. And the basically the format of the show is M tells a paranormal story and Christine will tell a true crime one. And that's kind of how the format goes every time. Oh, that's interesting. And it's very fun because I've always had an affinity and an interest in that realm, especially paranormal stuff. Like I love paranormal stuff, but I am way too scared to watch a scary movie. Same. I can't do it. And even like, I don't know, like reading even uh, like the podcast where it's like um, very produced to a point where it's like the commenter or the um, the host is just going through the story, like kind of like a newscast. Those are too scary for me too. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I need <laughs> – I know. I get suspicious and I get scared. So – uh, the way that they host it is it very much is a comedy show. Like they're talking about very serious stuff sometimes, especially in the true crime uh, part of the show. But they just have such a great rapport and friendship and back and forth with each other that it's so funny that I can actually listen to it. And I'm like, oh, these are really cool stories that I, you know, on the paranormal side that I knew nothing about and I'm intrigued or, oh, I've never heard about this crime and you know there are some really interesting things that come out of it because what's fun is like with the true crime stuff they'll often talk about if any um like laws or changes to the legal system came with that case so it's just really cool I think you should check it out it's uh you know it's very fun they they talk like we do and um I think you'd like it nice yeah I might have to check that out because I I'm with you like um, there's a couple shows that are, I guess, are true crime ish that I listen to, but I almost need them like presented a different way. Yes, to me because I'm the same as you. Like I'm not into scary stuff. Um, I get too paranoid mm -hmm. after the fact, and uh, you know, especially if I'm home alone, I'm like checking all the doors three times just to make sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so maybe I have to look in into that one. Yeah, it's it's really fun. Um, the one time, though, even though it is really funny, I was walking home in the city listening to it at night, and um, I didn't sleep very well that night. So it just sounds like do a bad that. idea. Don't do that. Yeah, don't listen to true don't crime and horror shows while you're out walking the streets. Yeah. So yeah, it is a one of it's a very very popular podcast. So I'm sure some of our listeners have already heard of it, but if you haven't. It's the And That's Why We Drink podcast hosted by M. Schultz and Christine Schieffer. Love it. So my third show is pretty obvious for me, the Equestrian mm -hmm. Podcast with Bethany Lee. Um, Fair. I, come on. I had to have a horse <laughs> show in here somewhere. And there's actually a secondary podcast that I, I have just started listening to, um, Spring in Equestrian uh, with mm -hmm. – Jessica and um, that one I'm a little bit newer to but she is like a, a fellow Canadian so always got to give a shout out to the Canadian um, mm -hmm. but Bethany her podcast the equestrian podcast has been out for a few years now and oh my god if you are a horse person you need to be listening to this show she has had McLean Ward BZ Madden um, I think Matt Cohn's been on like all of these mm -hmm. amazing greats have been on her show and I just always learn something because, you know, she doesn't focus like obviously, you know, she's a hunter jumper rider like me, but, um, you know, she's done vaulting. She's done the Western world, mm -hmm. everything, you know, she, she doesn't really just, uh, put herself into a box 
with just the Mm hunter jumper world like she really has like all the connections Mm -hmm. and i just enjoy this show so so much so if you're like a horse person get on this (laughs) one if you're a canadian horse person definitely also check out spring and equestrian um yeah i just i can't get enough of this show i just love it it really satisfies my my need for horse knowledge Mm -hmm. and it's also it's just very well done as well she asks great questions she's always got a great guest on there and again one of the shows where like i don't think i've ever heard a bad one like i just enjoy it every single time lovely well i need to check that one out too especially as i'm feeling like getting back into riding again gotta make i I feel like there's room in the budget now (laughs) (laughs) get close Getting closer. We're getting closer. Yeah. Well, listen to this show so it can kind of inspire you to get back in the saddle. Well, my third one is the Nerd Soup podcast. Oh, this is a nerdy yes. one. <laughs> this, I, it's it's so nerdy. It's so nerdy. But uh, I actually started listening to them through their YouTube channel, which is called Nerd Soup. Yes. Uh, you and I did it at the same time. Yes. Oh, because, my gosh. Yeah. Because they used to review every Game of Thrones episode but as they were coming out. But also, not didn't they also do The 100 as well? Or am I, I thinking remember. something else? I think that might be someone else. I don't think I've seen them talk about it they, okay they may have yeah because I, I definitely remember them doing the game of thrones episodes because i always had to watch a review after i watched one because i'm like yes there's something i definitely missed um yeah but i also thought they did the hundred for for some reason but maybe that was uh, a different one but yes nerd soup mm-hmm. definitely watch their youtube channel glad they've got the podcast yeah, yeah. So they th- when they did the Game of Thrones episodes, they were like an hour long. And I <laughs> was just time. like, yes, this is great. Uh-huh. And um, I think it was season eight of Game of Thrones that they started um, releasing those video audio to the podcast. So I would start listening to it when I was driving the car, right? Instead of just watching the video. And I don't know, it just stuck because I worked in the film industry for a bit and that just it wasn't right for me, but I still love knowing about what's going on. And really, like, it feels like each episode that they do is just a roundup of movie and TV news, Mm -hmm. which is really fun. And they tend to focus on the nerdier uh, nerdier, uh, media in life which is right up my alley. So, you know, they'll talk about Marvel, they'll talk about Game of Thrones, and um, I think the new spinoff that's coming out this summer, they talk about that a bit. Uh, But then they also talk about, um, you know, the Oscar buzz movies, or they'll talk about movies that were featured at TIFF, which is the Toronto International Film Festival. And it's just hosted by a group of friends Every episode tends to have Bo and Aaron leading it. They're kind of like the two hosts, but then they have their other friends who will come on on an episode by episode basis. And it's just nice. It feels almost similar to us where they've known each other for a super long time and talking about that is something that they love to do and they made a podcast out of it. Nice. Yeah, I really love um, podcasts and and YouTube shows that do recaps and just talk about different movies and tv shows Mm -hmm. because for me like i find i get a greater appreciation for the show and then like i'm just that much more invested because sometimes like i'll I'll watch something and then i'm like okay someone needs to explain like the theories that they have like um the the hidden easter eggs and then i just get so consumed with that that i'm like very excited to watch more um Mm -hmm. yeah so I'm a big fan of of those types of shows yeah I'm also pretty sure that Aaron said that his favorite movie uh I think it was 2019 was Little Women by Greta Gerwig and I'm like you know what we're friends (laughs) pretty sure that was my favorite movie too (laughs) I sealed the deal for you (laughs) yeah so if yeah if that's something that you think you would be interested in it's the Nerd Soup Cop podcast nice and it's a lot of fun yeah well 
staying on the topic of TV shows, my mm-hmm. next favorite podcast is no surprise drama queens with hillary burton I do love drama queens bethany joy lens and sophia bush so if you haven't heard of it yet it's the podcast about one tree hill one of my favorite dramas from when i was growing up <laughs> and oh my god i live for their intro song i do love it when it's i hear so that like first of all you don't know me Yes. And then it goes into their jam. I'm like, yes. Like, I could just listen to it on repeat. And um, they play at the beginning and the end. So mm-hmm. I'm, like, listening to the commercials just to hear it. That's how passionate I am about it. So what I really love about this show is that it kind of gives me an insight and a background into something I really loved because, um, you know, One Tree Hill came out in the early 2000s and this podcast came out in 2021. And, you know, the culture was just a little bit different back then. And we just weren't as aware of Mm -hmm. things that were going on and maybe like not so appropriate as we Mm -hmm. would with like today's lens. And Mm -hmm. I just love that, you know, Hillary, Joy and Sophia, they're bringing to light of like things that were really uncomfortable for them back then and just Mm -hmm. how like sometimes they were afraid to use their voice and stand up for themselves um so what they're doing in the show is like they're literally sitting together and they watch it and then they get on immediately after with the podcast and talk about the episode and a lot of the time they'll have like uh guests that were also actors on the show so i love that because you kind of hear their point of view and it's kind of amazing because it's just like how they became such great friends and and really bonded like sisters to protect mm-hmm. themselves and they talk about you know their family and like what they're doing now and i just i just love it like i rachel i know you listen to the show as well mm-hmm. oh i love it also uh the episode with barbara allen woods oh yeah i don't even i don't even care if you watched one tree hill just go listen to it because she is honestly i want to be her when I oh grow my up. god. Yes. She's amazing. She so, is. I think, did they have an episode with Moira Kelly? Yes. Yes, they did. They did. They did. Okay. I feel I was I wanted to make sure I did not make it up. Um, so those were amazing. Also the episode with Paul. Oh, Paul. I just, I just <laughs> it was so, love that oh my episode. God. And I was so excited for you to listen to that episode because I think I was like one or two ahead of you. And but we were also watching One Tree Hill at the time, and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I hate Dan, he's so shitty. And I'm just like, but Paul is amazing. And she's just like, No, he's not. Um, and then you listen to that episode, and he is like the sweetest, most kindest man ever. I almost cried. Yeah, yeah, he is like the most incredible actor as a villain and just owned that role. And I love some of the stories that he would tell. He's just like, yeah, this lady like came up and hit me with her purse because she was so (laughs) mad about what something Dan did on the show. (laughs) And and like, but he doesn't like come out in Paul as that situation. He came out as Dan reacting to her because and then she smiled and she was just like oh yeah that's what I wanted um Mm -hmm. so it's just such a good show and I love it because they just go they they go on tangents like we do so yeah can relate and um I don't know it's kind of like they're they're so protective of their characters yet they they're really great at explaining like you know guys we were just actors you know you know I'm Sophia's like, I'm not Brooke Davis. You know, there's parts of me mm-hmm. that is is influenced in in Brooke, but like I'm not her. Mm-hmm. So it just gives that like such a real voice to actors, and it could apply to any TV show of, you know, these are just characters and we mm-hmm. want to protect them, but like we are not them. Yeah. And I also have been finding it very interesting because like TV is not necessarily done in that format anymore. Uh, no. The season is 25 episodes. I know. And yeah. just just listening to their reactions is just such a um, – how do I word this? It's just demonstrating how disjointed TV in that era was because – it was pretty much they would write an episode, film it, 
and it would be released a week later. Yeah, like they were working on such a short time frame because their show was actually picked up in replacement of another one. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they were literally filming these episodes and they're like, we don't know where this gets going. Like the writers were just um, having to roll with it. And same with the actors. They're just like, okay, we're shooting Mm -hmm. what's supposed to be the summertime in the dead of winter in North Carolina. (laughs) Um, And I find now like, you know, we're still watching through all nine seasons and it's given me a new awareness when I'm watching. Like I still watch the show because like I've, I've enjoyed it, but I'm just, you know, like, huh, like Lucas, you were kind of kind a of shitty. You were kind of shitty. Whereas like a yeah. teenager, I was just like, oh, I love Lucas. Like he's so perfect. He's so broody and I want him. Screw Nathan. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm just like, Nathan, you are a stand up dude. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so it's, it's so funny going back to things that, you know, say with them, like, you know, they did this when they were kids and now mm-hmm. that they're adults, just going back and watching it. And um, it's a lot of fun. So I highly recommend mm-hmm. that show if if you haven't um, listened to it. It's called Drama Queens. Mm-hmm. And and just going back to the write, writing quickly, because I just find it really fun, is like uh, like we were saying, it was such a short time frame and so many episodes were like written by different people or different people were in the writer's rooms. So they will have like this amazing episode that they talk about where they're like, yes, this was kick-ass. Like, love how we were uh, portrayed in this episode. Then the next one, it's been pretty much influenced by some like creepy writer, producer man who it's like it's some male (laughs) fantasy. And they're like, what on earth was that? And it's just so interesting to see the difference uh, not even just with this show, but just like all shows from that era compared to now where like they are produced from beginning to end, kind of like a movie is. Yes. And, you know, it's 10 episodes. Usually one writer is like the head writer who, you know, makes sure that the story flows properly and you know what each point is. So you know where you're going. And it's just so interesting. I think the difference of tv generations yes of of how they're structured yes exactly because like when you have like all those different writers and all those different directors it's just like wow you could tell which episodes were cringy and which ones were like stand out brilliant see that ties back to the nerd soup thing where the the movie uh the ex entertainment industry worker comes out in me yes <laughs> yes Um, all right. Well, my fourth one is also one that you listen to. And uh, so I think this will be a fun conversation. And you actually got me onto it. And it's What's the Juice hosted by (laughs) Olivia, the founder of Organic Olivia. And wow, those episodes. I do uh, still to this day adore season one. Yes, it was amazing. It was fantastic. And she is just, I don't even know how you explain her. Like she's so smart and so or like so focused on a holistic view of health and brings in some amazing experts in that world. But she's also so spiritual and brings in amazing ex- uh, amazing experts from that world. And I'm like, I've just learned so many random things from you in the two seasons of your show and it's fantastic yeah so i'm i'm an og organic olivia youtube subscriber um Mm -hmm. mainly because like she started out her youtube channel because she suffered from like ibs she had terrible cystic hormonal acne and Mm -hmm. was really trying to break the cycle of her health and um she's actually like a a trained herbalist um she has her own herbal supplements that she creates and sells on her on her site, Organic Olivia. I have tried many of them. They are potent and amazing. I can't recommend them enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. She's just a girl that you connect on a soul level mm-hmm. with. Like just so personable and really does share her life and her struggles um 
but then also like how do you overcome those struggles and I think okay a standout episode was her journey with her parents through COVID yeah um mm-hmm. both of her parents ended up hospitalized in the early months of COVID and she was just their advocate um and really helped them pull through and honestly like if she if she hadn't stepped up and and been in that role like I, I don't think her parents would have made it through so mm-hmm. uh she's just such an amazing spirit and yeah i i love i love that show like ladies if, if you're and, and men um if you are not listening to that show you need to get on it uh also one of my favorite moments in her show is uh first episode of season two <gasps> when nick proposed to oh her at the end of it i i to this, I'm pretty sure I bawled my eyes out at work listening to it. it I was cried. Such, I cried. It was it was <laughs> such a beautiful moment, and I don't know something about them. They have such a beautiful, beautiful relationship, and I just huh, she's got such a life. She lives such a beautiful life. Yes, but she's worked for it, you know, like because she'll talk about like the struggles that her and Nick have, like uh, just as individuals. And how they work on it together to overcome them. Oh, they're just – I love them. I just love so them. So inspiring. Yeah, so can't inspiring. wait for season three. <laughs> yeah, definitely check her out. That's – what's the juice? Excellent. So I love the order that we're going in because my next <laughs> one, <laughs> my number five, is another like health-related show. And that is The Health Code with Sarah and Kurt. And if you don't know Sarah, it's Sarah's Day from YouTube. I think I've mentioned her quite a lot on this show. I'm one of her OG subscribers for very much the same reason as I am for Olivia. You know, she struggled with her hormonal acne, and I'm actually currently working with her natural path, which mm-hmm. we will have an episode of that coming up in a few months. Um, and I just, I love this one to throw on when I'm like, getting my coffee in the morning, making a little breakfast, or just getting dressed because they're super short. They're only available on Spotify. So Mm -hmm. if you are on Apple, you won't be able to find the most recent episodes. I think you might be able to get her older ones that are a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But this is a daily podcast that comes out Monday through Fridays. And I kind of love that we're in Canada because they're in Australia. So we always have like like a day ahead of episodes. So (laughs) on Monday, I usually have two to listen to, which is very exciting. And they're super short. You know, they're never any longer than 10 to 15 minutes. So if you want something just to throw on and kind of start your day in a really fun, um, uplifting mood, uh, Mm -hmm. this is definitely the show for you. I've been kind of addicted to it right now because I'm also following Sarah's journey with her second pregnancy on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And every Wednesday, she brings her sister, M on, and they just, like, talk about, like, whatever pregnancy thing <laughs> at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, don't judge my weird obsession. I'm just, like, super <laughs> fascinated. I don't know. Once I turned, like, in my late 20s, I'm just like, oh, children. <laughs> Can't relate, Fair. but I'm very fascinated. <laughs> I mean, same. It's it's all right. I understand. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'm glad I'm not alone in this. Um and it's like you terrify me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very terrifying. But I'm so curious. And they're just so much fun. And her husband, Kurt, like he he is just, oh my God, he reminds me of my boyfriend so much, just with their crazy humor. And mm-hmm. they just talk about something random for 10 minutes. And I don't know, it's just always fun. So definitely a great way to start your day. And that is the health code with Sarah and Kurt. Lovely. Well, my last one, and I feel like this is a joint uh, podcast, and we could not end our favorite podcast episode without bringing up the Empowered Woman Rises, hosted by our dear friend, Preeti. Of course, we needed to include this one because we love Preeti and her show. Yes. So... Uh, as many of our listeners know, I think when this one comes out, it will have been two episodes ago. We recently released the episode that we did on her show about our experiences with toxic relationships. And also back in November, we had her on 
to pretty much discuss discrimination as a woman in the workplace and in all facets of life. So we've had some really great conversations with her. And on her show, she has some wonderful, wonderful conversations with experts from so many different fields with a focus of empowering women. And I don't, there's just so many interesting things that she talks about. Um, You know, she's done some episodes about being a female entrepreneur. Uh, Another one that she did that absolutely terrified me uh, for the child that I do not have was her episode on human trafficking. (laughs) (laughs) I know we're we're terrified for unborn children. (laughs) Yeah, so that was really great. And, you know, she's just a wonderful, wonderful podcast host and interviewer. She is an exceptional listener. And I don't know, she just, she is really, really doing great work. And we cannot recommend her episodes enough. And also her Instagram page. Oh, yes. She's also very killing it on Instagram. Like, we need to take some notes <laughs> from her. I know. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love this show as well. And one of the standout ones for me is when she had um, Court on. And I'm, oh, my God, I cannot remember Court's last name. But uh, she is like a self-defense kickbox coach. And mm-hmm. honestly, it opened my eyes so much to situations I have been in that could have been, you know, potentially dangerous and has just made me more aware of my surroundings. Um, You know, like I live in a fairly safe area, but again, sometimes you just never know. So I've definitely just been more cautious and aware of things going on around me ever Mm -hmm. since listening to, to those episodes and, um, yeah, you know, just as, as a woman, we need to do all that we can to keep ourselves safe. So Pretty's show has really just made me aware of things that, um, you know, things I did in the past when I lived downtown in the city. And I'm like, oh, my yeah. God, like, what was I thinking? Like, I would never do that now, knowing what I know. So mm-hmm. if you need to feel empowered as a woman, go listen to that show. Go check her out. Go check her out. Like, Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> Go listen to the episodes we're on. They're fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no self-promotion there. Um, no, none at all. So those are our top 10 podcasts that we love to listen to. Definitely go check them out. And we both just wanted to throw in like a couple honorable mentions and a couple dishonorable mentions um so for my honorable i'm not using the name for dishonorable no of course not no no because we don't like you know we we want to support all shows there's just like some things that happen in shows and i'm just like what um Mm -hmm. anyway we'll get into that so for my honorable mention i want to give a shout out to parcast network and all the shows Mm -hmm. that they have on spotify they are very well uh produced and written and some of my favorite ones are Uh, conspiracy theories. I am not a conspiracy theorist. People just (laughs) FYI, I love them because they provide like a history lesson and then just how common conspiracies came about from these events. And then it's like from our rating, like this is how plausible we think this conspiracy theory is. So I love that Mm -hmm. show. Um, Another one I love is Once Upon a Time. I'm kind of obsessed with it right now because it's all about the films that Walt Disney has done. Yet mm-hmm. it's telling the original tales oh, of those boy. stories. So they are dark. <laughs> like mm-hmm. this is my version of true crime at the moment um, or just like the horror stories. And when I was listening to that show, I stumbled across another one of theirs that I just started on Monday and it's called Tales. Mm-hmm. And oh my God, it does like every folklore fairy tale story throughout history and actually just tells you like, that that version of the story it's haunting it's crazy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yet like oh my god i'm so engaged by it so if you love to kind of like listen to stories and a little bit less conversation definitely j- go check out podcast they also do have some great like true crime shows not really up my alley but um they've got a lot of great content on there so that is my honorable mention great 
Well, mine is um, just because this podcast is literally huge. So I was like, I'll just throw it in the honorable mentions because I'm pretty sure we've all listened to an episode at some point. And it's Armchair Expert hosted by Dax Shepard and Monica Padman. Again, they're exclusive to Spotify and they've had some really, really amazing guests on where basically they talk about the messiness of being human. And it's really interesting. I was listening to an episode today that uh, they were interviewing the ex-CEO of Google. Oh, My other favorite episode was um, they interviewed Stanley Tucci. Oh, yeah. Which which was just I don't I love Stanley Chucci. It was amazing. Oh, and, and, he was and just, sorry, fun fact, but isn't that who Moira Kelly is doing a big big show with at the yes. moment? Yes. That no one knows about, not even them. That no one knows about. So, yeah. Uh Armchair Expert is fantastic. I think that the hosts are two really really wonderful interviewers. I've learned a lot and um they just have a nice diversity of guests that they bring on. So you don't really know what you're going to get with the conversation. And that's really, really fun. And then an extension of that is once a month, they do a version of the show called Armchair and Dangerous, which similar to one of your favorite podcast shows is basically about conspiracy theories. <laughs> I love it. Where um, the... Oh, I don't know if that show still runs, but the host of Dark Tourist, David Ferrier, comes on the show to basically lead them through a conspiracy theory or like something sc- spooky. And why I like uh, this version of discussing those conspiracy theories is because they'll often, uh, he often will go interview somebody who is for it and someone who's against it. So you kind of get to hear those differing point of views. And I just find it very interesting. Yeah. See, I love it where it's not like someone who's like hardcore, I believe in this. It's just like, yes, no, let's like step back a little bit, present the facts and then weigh the opinions, you know, like, so Mm -hmm. yeah, those are honorable mentions. (laughs) Yeah. He, he definitely approaches it from a very like journalistic point of view where, you know, he more is, he's more presenting This is what one side thinks, and this is what the other side thinks. What do you two think? Love it. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So for our dishonorable mentions, we're not going to name any shows here. No. Um, One thing, though, just because, like, I I do try out a lot of shows, and we'll try in, like, a few episodes, see if I like it or not. And one thing that we were actually listening to for research recently was was a podcast – that was supporting um, women and like their their business or different like um, shows, book like books, everything, everything that could be centered around like uh, a female creator. Women this is, who are killing it. Yeah, yeah, women Basically. who are killing it. So this is what the show is about, and it was just kind of like coming on, like they get interviewed and just have a little discussion, and it was a really great way for for women to kind of just share what they're doing. The mm-hmm. one thing that really surprised me is when I hit play on the show, I was not expecting a male host. No. And I don't know if that's weird of me to think that that was weird, but I was just like, okay, this is like an all four women podcast, yet you have a male host. And I just, like, it was a good show. I'm not complaining about the show at all. Like, it was, it was yeah. great. It was very informative. But I was just like, um... <laughs> Okay, see, I'm not like, going to lie. It seems like a woman maybe should have been the host of this female empowerment show. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I don't think it's weird because I thought the same thing. Okay, good. And I hit play on it while my boyfriend and I were doing a workout. And he sits up, like stops his sit-ups, looks at me and goes, why is a man – hosting this okay i'm glad even men were questioning this because i was just yes. like this just doesn't match like and i even was just like did i hit the right thing and i'm like oh no i'm on the right thing so very confusing why why a male was yeah. hosting a female empowerment show yeah so that is just that's one of my dishonorable mentions what's one of yours all right so my maybe you can help me out with describing this a bit, but I think I would define it as, especially if it's hosted by someone who is very successful, mm-hmm. especially financially, 
Um, I don't like constant subtle bragging that isn't subtle at all. Like, uh, you know, sometimes it feels uh, – you know the, which what I'm talking about. Yes. But I don't need to hear the list of how amazing you are and how amazing all your accomplishments are and how rich you are every single episode. Yeah. Like, I get the point. I get the point. You're successful. <laughs> You're doing That's very great. well. <laughs> Good for you. Yes. Yeah, so I think um, just with who I am as a person that makes me um, – I don't like I I like to think uh your accomplishments should speak for themselves and I I just I kind of don't trust somebody as much when they feel the need to drill it down my throat. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like it okay. feels like what are you hiding? <laughs> okay, so it's kind of funny that you mentioned that. I've been kind of watching like best of Game of Thrones things recently. And yes. one of the things was Tywin to Joffrey and Joffrey was just like but I'm the king or something like that. Like he was having a temper tantrum like Joffrey does. And yes. Tywin is just like any king who needs to say he's the king isn't really a king. And I was just like thinking about that when you were talking about it. Okay. But that's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah, Thank see, you. Thank you, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Thank you, Game of Thrones. That's – no, that's a really good way to put it is that um, I, just with like some of the content in that – the specific show I'm referring to is like it is very uh, high level business stuff, and sometimes I'm just like, "You're really telling me how great you are a lot. Why should I trust what you are saying?" Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Yes. So um, I don't want to get sued, so I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I have one other dishonorable mention, and this is more just like my own personal preference because I know people. Uh, love these types of shows, but they're like um, the explicit sex shows, uh, and yeah. like nothing wrong with them. Like it's it's fine. It's just like my personal preference, mm -hmm. and I'm not a prude, no, guys. I like agree. I'm really not a prude. But for the for the shows where like that's all it is, and it's all these like crazy s stories, and you know, you kind of wonder if some of them are even true because how, how could that many things happen to one person but mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm not judging um, I don't know I just like I get a little tired of those kinds of shows and when I'm looking at uh, different like podcast recommendations on on Reddit it seems like a lot of people are like okay we really liked the show but then it just got like so crazy out there with all the sex that they're just like okay guys like talk about something else so that that's yeah. just one thing. And that's honestly like my own personal preference. I'm not saying like um, people shouldn't put those types of shows out there. Like they're totally fine and like they have an audience. But for me personally, I'm just like, I only want to listen to that so much. Like I, I can't binge a show like that. Yeah. No, I I agree. I That's my personal preference as well. I think um, the part of it is like the language yeah. that's used in those episodes. It's almost like – some of the content I'm interested in, but it's just the language that comes with that kind of a show. Mm, yes. And I think that's kind of what some of my problem is. And like, we are no angels over here. Like there's a reason why our shows are rated E because like I'm probably the worst offender. I'll just randomly swear yeah. all the time. <laughs> but like, we don't say it every other word, you know, <laughs> we try not to. No, no. Like when it feels like, uh, like I like to listen to shows when I'm driving and like at work and stuff when I feel like I can't listen to it at work. Ooh, yes. Yes. When you yeah. feel like you're listening to something that's like not safe for work, even though it's like on your headphones. Yeah. It's, it gets kind of like, mm, like, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, my, my big pet peeve is just, especially when it's like a very big show. It's just audio. I was waiting for you to say that. I have – it's just such – I think because I do the editing, it's such a pet peeve for me when it just – it sounds like it was filmed in a trash can. Yeah. And like we like do not have like a fancy so setup or fancy microphones. Like we are pretty ho-hum basic on our yeah. show. And when you have like yeah. those big, big shows that you know they have their very own studios and like probably – um, producers and and podcast editors, you're just like, hey, you know, we expected yeah. more. We expect more. 
we're we're sitting here on our hundred dollar blue yeti microphones okay <laughs> we're like we're like the bootstrappers over here making our own blanket forts recording in our cars <laughs> closets and, and like whatever's free and we and you know what i like to think our audio is pretty freaking good <laughs> i mean i like it someone's probably going to be like it's not that good but you know what for know. us it works it's delightful anyway, anyway. But yeah i think mine just um i think another thing is consistency with audio yes uh from episode to episode because i'm like you know sometimes funky sounding audio is a very stylistic choice on behalf of the host which i think is great but i appreciate the consistency with that stylistic choice right Yes. Okay. I'm. I'm. I'm te- stepping off of my soapbox. Okay. Good. I am. I am not an expert, <laughs> but I like to think I am. Well, hey, you know what? We're one step closer. That's true. It's true. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we won't ramble on anymore. Please, definitely go check out those podcast shows because we love them, and we hope that you will love them too. And if any of those hosts of those shows happen to come across our little show here and want to come on and talk to us, let us know <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, it's yep. Tea with Laura and Rachel. And definitely, if you like our shows, listen to more of them, share them with friends, and leave us a nice five-star review. Anything else, Rachel? Uh, just if the – and that's why we drink hosts ever came on this show, the episode would be six hours. That's okay. That's okay. We can marathon <laughs> it. We can do this. <laughs> We can do this. <laughs> yeah, that's it for me. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Live like tea. Live like tea. <laughs>